So what we're going to do is talk about sequential statements. They're very cool. They allow us to kind of program the logic of the hoses that control the cylinders and actually put the components in like air supplies and actually which limit valve and which pilot we hook up to do to make it do whatever we want it to do. So we have a control statement and we have a sequential statement. The control statement is essentially the actions themselves. So we talk about the actions of cylinders in that A plus means A extends. So this is cylinder A and that pilot is A plus. That's cylinder B and that pilot is B plus and then that's A plus. So a capital represents an action. Now the limit switches are represented by lowercase letters. Take a look at this. That's the limit switch. That's the inside limit switch. That's a term we can use, inside limit switch. This is an inside limit switch for cylinder A, so it's denoted with a lowercase a. And same thing with here. So if we take a look at cylinder B, the outside limit switch is denoted with a lowercase b. And more specifically, it's b plus and that's B minus. So minus means retracted and plus means extended. I think we're okay with that. So let me talk about the control statement. Let's just say these guys were in a manufacturing process where A had to extend and then B had to extend and then A had to retract and B had to retract. Essentially in the lab, in lab two, we talked about that a little bit, about a cheese press, right? So there's this clamp that clamps onto the cheese and then this press comes down and presses the cheese and then the clamp is removed and then the press comes back up again. So that process would be automatic. Buddy would just put the cheese in the, in the, in the kind of the station and he would press a button and he would back off and the whole thing would happen. Now, we'd actually probably want to add in some safety there so that maybe if it was another button, there would be two buttons that he had to press, and, or maybe the button that he had to press, we would make it a couple arms lengths away from the station. But there are lots of cool ways we can add safety into pneumatics, and we'll do that in lab four when we talk about um, timers. Very cool. It's called two hands, no tie down whatever that means. We'll go over that. Let's focus on sequential statements and on control statements and walk through the process. So we're going to use that cheese press concept, um, or pardon me, application, and we're going to write the control statement for that application. So the control statement is this, A plus comma B plus A minus B minus. So the capitals are the actions. So when we put the cheese in, A is the clamp and it clamps it. Now in the lab, I call that C. We don't always have to call this cylinder A and that cylinder B. We can denote them by a letter that represents their action. So C for the clamp, but let's just focus on this. We'll stay with A, B, and C, and nice and simple and straightforward. Okay, so these are the actions, and if we talk about just the actions, we're discussing a control statement. Okay, so now that's a control statement. So, okay, what do I do to make that happen if I just press a button? All I'm going to do is press a button, and it's going to go back and forth and back and forth and do its thing. As long as I hold my finger on the button, it's going to keep doing that. And you saw that in the, in the lab video for lab two. Okay, so what we're going to do is build the sequential statement for that. You've already seen that because you've seen that video for lab two, but let's walk through why that is like that. Essentially, what I'm going to do is when I write my sequential statement, I'm not worried about what it's supposed to, what the end result is going to look like. The sequential statement is a programming language and what we do is when you're starting a program you may actually write the main uh, and then a couple subroutines and you don't really know what's going to happen or what's going to go in them but you just kind of write the bigger structure of things. We're going to do that now. So when we design a sequential statement we're not really concerned about what it's supposed to do or what the end logic is supposed to look like. We just write the basic sequential statement and it is what we do is write the actions and then the limit valve, action limit, action limit, action limit. Let's go on with that.
Okay, so I'm going to write this. I'm going to write my action, a plus, and then a little a. So comma, and then my next action is b. Okay, so b plus, and then b plus. So I'm writing my action, then my limit. My action, my limit. I just continue with that process. So now I've got a minus, a minus, and then here is b minus, b minus. Let me put a, a colon in there, or a comma, pardon me. <laughs> okay, that's a better b. Okay, that's the first step. That's all you got to do. Don't think about any of the logic. Now, we have to consider what's actually going to happen. Now, it's actually, we just want that to happen. So it's actually pretty simple. So our first one's pretty simple. What we do is, when we have a nice simple one like this, we're going to put air supplies to this, 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 and this. Essentially, the rule is, every single limit valve has to have an arrow going down. The, by the way, the action valves, the actions, sorry, the actions do not have arrows going down. The only arrows that go down in a sequential statement are the arrows that go to these. So no matter what, we need an arrow that goes down to this, down to that, down to that, and down to that. All of our lowercase. Now in this case, we're just going to put air supplies directly like this. Now, the reason we're just putting air supplies here is because this is a really simple control. That's a nice and simple control statement. If we had brackets in that, and it got more complicated, in that two of these were happening at the same time, we wouldn't put these to all of them. But let's just continue forward, and you'll just get to know these as you go. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got air going down to each one of these. Now, air also, an arrow has to go has to go up into every single action. So an arrow has to go up into every action. Absolutely 100% an arrow has to go up into every action. Now what we do is we think about why that action is supposed to happen. And if we go back to sequencing by position sensing, which we talked about in lab two, the reason that this happens is because that's done. Right? Because that's supposed to happen, then that's supposed to happen, then that, and then that. So we know that this happens because that's done. How do we know that that's done? Well, we know that B plus is done because this limit valve has been hit. So the limit valves tell us about the position. So this sequence is controlled by the positions. So positions, sequencing by position sensing. So, actually, what's going on here is that another rule about the sequential statement is that it, a line has to come out of every single limit valve. Did I say every single one? Yeah, every single one. Okay. So an arrow has to come out of here. Has to come out of here. Has to, and there's actually one that comes out of there too. Now, this one's pretty simple. Check it out. This makes that happen. So, when, when A fully extends. The next thing is B to fully extend. So this, watch this, the air that comes out of here is going to go into here and it's going to go to there. And by the way, this gets air directly from supply. They actually, in this case, all get air directly from supply. So as you can see, that limit valve is this limit valve that one is that one and so on and they all get air directly from supply so when we're building our circuit directly from this this thing is a hosing diagram it's a hosing and air diagram it's pretty much a diagram for your whole circuit yeah, not only is it a logical programming language but it's a hosing diagram it's pretty cool just like I love this just like ladder logic is a logical programming language, but it's also a wiring diagram. Okay, so let's continue. In this case, this guy goes over here and goes to that. This guy goes over here and goes to that. So the reason this happens is because this is done. This 
tells us about the position. That's the position sensor for this action. This is the position sensor for this action. Whoa, minus B plus. Oh, I did it. I didn't do it right. Okay. Let's fix it. Do you see what went wrong? I hope you caught that while I was going through that. I... Okay, wait a second. I just didn't do a very good plus sign. Okay, actually, this... Take a look. You see what's going on? This is okay. This is good. We're learning. We're going through this and we're learning from this because... This is, let me put this on. Because... You know, if I make a mistake and we have to fix it, we'll see what's going on. Okay, let's fix that. So I took my error out of here because I thought that said A minus. So you see, all you have to do is like follow what it says. And I didn't write what it says properly, so I didn't follow it right. But if you write it properly, it's good. Watch this. A plus goes here. So let's analyze this again. The reason that happens, the reason this goes out, I have to put air into this pilot to make that go out. The reason that goes out is because A extended all the way. So that goes to there. And the same thing goes on here. The reason that happens is because A is fully extended. This position sensing device called a limit valve tells us that B has extended. So we run the air to there and run the air to there. Now, the other thing that I haven't put in here is the push button. Now, I'm just going to draw it real quick in here. Well, we know. Actually, let me just draw the push button properly here. Okay, so that's a push button. I got my spring there. My push button is going to have exhaust. Maybe we'll actually talk about exhaust at this point, so we can go here. Um, what's going to happen here is that the air. The reason this is going to happen, if I keep my finger on the button, this thing just keeps looping. Now, I may not want it to loop, but if I kept my finger on the button, it would loop. So, the reason this happens is because that happens and someone presses the button. So, let's actually put a push button in here. So, as far as the push button goes, I need to draw a push button. We're just going to draw a little box with a squeeze. So, I got my little box here and my push button here, and all I have to do is push this and then that's going to go. And the reason that there's air here is because the last action was for B to retract. So if I just, if it's not running and I walk up to it, B's retracted. So if B's retracted, take a look at this. The air here, sorry, the air here is going through here. And because B's retracted, actually there's air coming out of here. I'm going to put this into my limit valve. I always go into the left side of my limit valve. I'm going to come out here and I'm going to go to A+. Plus. That is this line. So let's actually finish this circuit with all of the lines in this. Okay, so essentially we've got this line. Let's do this line. Okay, so from B plus to the action A minus. Okay, so from B plus to the action A minus. And we know that when we cross lines, it's okay if I want to indicate that they're connected, then what I do is I put a little dot. But because it's not dotted, it's not connected. If I wanted, I could also do this. This is perfectly acceptable. But we don't need to do that. Okay. So let's just continue here. It looks like there's, I've got this one, I've got that one. Let's do this one. So A minus to action B minus, okay? So A minus is here to action B minus. Okay. You know what? We're done. Huh. It's done. This is essentially, this is what a sequential statement does for you. The programming language is simple step-by-step -step process where there are certain rules, and if you just follow those rules, you can't get it wrong. They won't leave you hanging. It's like math. Like, you follow the rules for math, and you just, it'll work. So, this is a really powerful thing. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at another one of these with brackets in it. And if you took a look at lab two, better watch that to get a better understanding of what the brackets are all about but I'm going to walk you through that right now. So what brackets do 
is they tell us that two actions happen at the same time. And I think I have to get specific here. They say that two actions start to happen at the same time. It's important that we say that they start to happen at the same time because not specifically can we say that they're going to end at the same time. Maybe the cylinders are longer or smaller, or maybe one of them is under load and one of them is not. Maybe one of them is actually designed to work really quickly. And the other is metered, and so it actually makes it move really slowly. And you've seen me meter those limit valves, pardon me, you've seen me meter the cylinders by changing those throttle valves to make them go slower or more quickly in that lab. So we know that sometimes they move more quickly or more slowly. We can't say that they end their cycle at the same time, but we can tell them to start at the same time. So let's take a look at how we build a sequential statement where we have a control statement where there are brackets. So A and B start to extend at the same time. Okay. All we're going to do is again build a sequential statement in the same way in that we just make a basic structure and then we build it in from there. So the basic structure is the same as without brackets but we're just going to add brackets here. So we're going to do A plus and then B plus bracket A minus B minus well, I did that before, I think. Oh no, sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, let's continue. So now what we have to do is, we have to talk about where the air is. Remember the first thing we did before was we defined where the air was going into all the limit valves. In this case, it's a little different. Over here, I have air directly going into my limit valve. I'm going to make a circle and I'm going to put a little dot in the middle. Okay, circle, dot. And over here, I'm just going to do it and I'll explain why it's like that. We're going to go like this. Actually, you kind of know why it's like this because if you watch the lab on the lab video 2, the video on lab 2, you'll get it. So. What's going to happen here is that we're going to take this air and we're going to go over to here to supply here. Because the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure arrows go down to all limit valves. So is that done? Yes. So that's a nice little checklist you can do. Just first thing you do, make sure arrows go down to all limit valves. There's an arrow here, 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 and there is one here now. And the reason that we do this is because it's an AND. Because essentially what happens is this action, actually let me draw this, this last action, or it could be that this happens first and that happens next, or that this happens first and that happens next, but whatever, we look at this as an action. Those two together in that bracket, that action, or that sequence happens. Once it's fully done happening, then A can retract. But A cannot retract until that is done. So we know that that is done when this goes all the way out and there's air coming out of here. And, ready for this? This guy is all the way out. And there's air coming out of there. So when A is fully extended and B is fully extended, then the next thing can happen. Now, in this case, the next thing is for A to retract. So let me just draw this in. The next thing is for A to retract. Okay, good. So I've got this line in here and I've got that line in there. It's a holding diagram. Now, this gets pretty simple. We know if this happens because that is done. So when this is done, that happens. And when this is done, then this happens. When I say this, so like A goes out and then B goes out, we know that A and B start to go out at the same time. So in this case, I'm going to come down here. Now, I'm just going to draw this without the push button for now. We're going to talk about where the push button should go. 
Now I know the push button, sorry, I know that this action should start to happen when two things happen. One is when the cycle is done. So when this guy is passing air, and there's air going through here. So that's when I look at B minus. I'm going to go over to B minus, and I'm going to say, okay, so when B minus has air coming out of it, and there's air going into here, then this can happen. But I don't have my push button relevant or positioned in here. Let's position it. The push button always goes before the first action. And in this case, the first action are these. Yeah, it's a time where we're grammatically incorrect, but it's okay. The first action are these. So in this case, I'm going to draw my push button here. Okay, so I just draw a little box, a little push button on top. So now that goes before the first action. And we know that the first action is for this to happen. I'm just going to go over here. Now, watch this. I'm going to put a dot there. Now I'm going to run over to here. So like I said before, when we want two lines to indicate that they're connected, we just put a dot. Okay. So. What we've got here is, we've got some missing stuff. Let's see, because I'm looking over here and I'm like, well, there's no line here. What, what do I do? Well, you go back to your sequential statement and you find that line and you draw it in. So it's A minus. What's A minus? Oh, there's air coming out of here to B plus. You know, I did it again. I have a problem. <laughs> we all have issues, right? Okay. So this dude doesn't come from here. This comes from here. No, it is A plus. Actually, I don't know. I don't have a problem. You think my problem is that I don't know A minus, A minus. Oh, A minus is here. See, just go back to the sequential statement. Go back here, A minus into B minus. Okay. So let me take a look at that. Oh, that's nice. Here's my B minus here. Yeah, you know what? It does get a little messy, but that's okay. We can follow the rules that as long as lines cross and they don't have a dot, then they're not connected. And it's okay. Just follow the lines and you're good. So if I were to go and check this to see if this was working right and I didn't make any more mistakes and this was working right, then I would actually just go first to the rules of the sequential statement. Actually, let's just take a look at the rules for the sequential statement. So if we take a look at these, we can see that actually there's not a lot of them. It's pretty simple. So you can just read these and follow these and make sure that they're all there and they're all happening in your sequential statement and then you're good to move forward and build your circuit. So let's just take a look to see if I followed all the rules. Do I have arrows going down to all supply? It looks like actually do the supplies, is there an arrow going down to every single limit valve? And it looks like yes, 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 yes. Okay, done that. Is there an arrow? Is there a line or an arrow going up into every action? Yes, 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 yes. We're good. Pretty much in this case, we're just good to move forward and say, I know that this works. Is there a push button before the first action? In this case, the first action are these. And yes, I've put that push button directly before the first action. So that looks good. And now I can actually just make all of these hoses go over here. And kind of double check that. Let's just see, did I get it right? Now, I always start from here and I go forward and then back. So that's how I build my circuit. So I go to this guy, A plus, okay. So I'm gonna run a hose from A plus over to supply for B plus, yes. I'm going to then take an air hose out of here and run it to there. So is there an air coming out of B plus going to A minus? Going B plus going to A minus, yes. Okay, now I continue, I run my next hose. There's a, is there a hose coming from A minus to B minus? Okay, A minus to B minus. Okay, I should have done that one first. 
it would seem to screw me up. Okay, and now is there an air, air hose going from B minus to the push button? From B minus to the push button, yeah, into the left side of the push button. Now, out of the left side of the push button, it should be a junction, a T. So does this go directly to a T? Oh, it does. Okay, so from there, I'm going to go to A plus and B plus. A plus, B plus. Done. So if you just run those hoses, you're done. So let's look at one that's a little more complicated, and then we'll move forward to actually sequential statements with conflict, and, and I have to definitely talk about what conflict is first. We're good. So let's do one more that's a little more complicated. So now we've got the brackets kind of in the middle of the control statement. So what's going to happen here is that A goes out first when it's fully out. Then what's going to happen is B will start to retract. A and A will start to retract at the same time. And then when that's done, B will extend. Okay, now let's do the sequential statement for this control statement. Again, we just start simple and we write down the basic, the basic form or the foundation of the sequential statement and we fill it in with the rules. Okay. So I'm going to write this in here. So I'm going to say A plus A plus bracket B minus B minus A minus A minus bracket B plus B plus. Okay. So let's follow the rules. The rule is that every single one of these has to have an arrow going down to it. All right, this is standing alone. It's all on its own. So it gets an air supply. This guy, we know because it's brackets, a little special. This guy is standing all alone. So he gets an air supply. In the brackets, the first limit valve, he's the guy that gets the air supply. Now, we know that this can't happen until both of these happen. So we know that air has to come out of here and go down to there. And if you want to know more about why that's true, watch Lab 2 video. It totally explains it. Okay, so now, we know that I've just done that because it just my brain just, whoosh, that's how I do them. But you know what, let's just do it. Let's just do it. We know that this happens here and then, oh, wait a second. What, these happen at the same time, right? So that's going to go there, and that's going to go there. So this action makes this action happen, or these two start to extend. So the air coming out of here is going to tell that and that to move at the same time. And we know this is going to come down here, and it's going to go into there, and I'm going to put a little push button there. Nice. So that's my sequential statement. I'm done. I followed the rules. I did all of the arrows going down. Then I did all of the arrows going up into the actions. The actions have arrows going up into them. Sometimes I see students doing this. Like I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why they do that. Okay. Okay. So let's actually do the hosing. As far as the hosing goes, like I told you before, I start from here and I work, work my way this way. Now in this one, I took all of the air supplies out here. So we'll actually do those first. There's an air supply at A and B minus and at B plus. Okay, so there's an air supply here. So when you're actually hooking up at A and B minus, B plus. Okay. So when you're hooking up your circuit, the first thing you do is hook up the air. Just hook up the air supplies to the limit valves. And you're done. Now we know that this guy gets air from there. So let's do that. So out of B minus to A minus. Out of B minus, the air here goes to here. Okay? So I've hooked that up. Now I have done the first thing I do with the sequential statements. I've hooked up air to all the supplies. The next thing is I hook up the pilot air. Okay, so I know that, and I always go from here and I work forward, so I know there's air coming out of A plus and it goes to both B minus and A minus. Okay, 
So A plus goes to B minus, okay? So I'm gonna come down here. Uh, I, come to, I know that I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over here a little bit. There. So this goes to B minus and A minus, okay? So I'm gonna go from here over to there. Okay. So now I've got that picked up and that up. I've already done that because I know I don't have to worry about my air supplies to my limit valves because I know it's the first thing I do. So now I do this. Okay, out of A minus to B plus. Out of A minus to B plus. Okay. Nice. And over here from B plus, I go to the push button. From B plus. I go to the push button. And then from out of the push button, I go to A plus. Right. So, I know I'm done, because I just followed the rules. I hooked up air in here to the all the limit valves, and then from there, I did all the pilots, and I wired them over here, and if you hook up your circuits that way, it just goes bang, 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 bang. That's a hosing diagram. It's amazing. Now, let's talk about what conflict is and how we deal with conflict and what we call it is conflict resolution. And what's conflict in a circuit? Conflict happens when we have two actions that are right beside each other that are opposite. There are some other reasons for conflict as well, but it really boils down to some cylinders being locked in position. So what I've got here is I've got this, A goes out, then B goes out, then B has to retract. And you know, that could be that cheese example as well, where if you think about it, that cheese example actually would be better if the clamp came down, the punch came down, then the punch came back up again, and then the clamp released. I'm not sure if you thought about that during that process where you're reading about that cheese example, but really that's what should happen. The clamp should stay on the whole time while that's going on. So we do have situations where A, B, B, A, and that's exactly what's happening here. So there's conflict here. And I want to show you where the conflict is on this board. So let's run this. And what I've got is I've got my pressure. Let me just turn this guy on. Okay. So I've got this guy. And that is showing us pressure in one of the pilot lines. Let me just put that there. So what's going on here is that the pilot line, let me just get this to show you what's going on. There's a problem here because there's pressurized air in here. So what's happening here is that right now we can see there's pressurized air in there. And that's because this guy is retracted. So limit valve B is passing air. There's pressurized air in there and we can see it there. So it's telling the pilot in here let me just turn this off because I've got a bit of a leak. It's telling the pilot in here to push back. Now, that means there's pressurized air in here telling this cylinder to retract. Okay, well, that's fine. But why is that a problem? Well, the problem is the first action is for this cylinder to extend. Yeah, take a look at it. So this guy comes from the push button. When I press the push button, the first thing is supposed to be that it extends. But the problem is, this thing is starting with both of these retracted. So B is retracted. Take a look at it. B is retracted. So this cylinder is locked. Yeah, it's, it's, it's held locked. It's, it's held in retraction. So I can't extend it. So there's a conflict. There's a way to get rid of that. But let's actually get rid of the conflict to see what happens by maybe removing the pilot. What I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to take this line here. Ooh, I'm going to take this line here. All the hose is getting crazy in the way. And I'm going to block it. So we'll just take that out of the picture. So let's see what happens. I mean, I could get rid of the conflict by just doing some weird hosing along the way, but that's impractical. But let's see what happens if I do that. So this is blocked now. The air coming out of here is blocked. So if I do turn this on, 
we do see that there is some pressurized air in here. It's hard to get this out. So there's no more air in here. So that cylinder is not held locked anymore. And we can see that from here is empty. Okay, well, it should work now, right? So let's go. Oh, oh, it stopped. Yeah. It's because there's another conflict. Yeah. Check it out. Okay, now wait a second. What's not happening? Let's just pause. A is supposed to go out. It went out. B is supposed to go out. It's supposed to go out and it did go out. Okay. Now B is supposed to retract. Okay. Why is B not retracting? Well, because B is actually being held extended. Here's the conflict here. Look. When A. So it started to go, and then this pilot seemed to win. This pilot, which one? It's confusing. So, yeah, 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 this, yeah, this pilot seemed to win when I put it back, and it sent it forward again. So the conflict is here, so I'll get rid of it, and then we'll watch what happens. Okay. It does retract. I put my finger over this because if I leave it open, the compressor's going to come off. Okay, so yeah, there's conflict, there's a problem. Let's solve it. We're going to solve it with that. Now, you know these are DCVs, you know them as DCVs. Let me turn this guy off. And the reason we call them DCVs is because they direct the control of the cylinder, and that's fine. But you know what? We can also use these as relays. Wouldn't it be cool if there was a way <clears throat> for me to turn off the conflict and then turn it back on again when it's not a problem? Because what happened was I did actually remove that conflict so that the cylinder went out. But, you know, I kind of need it. Let me put this guy back here and go back to the original. What I did was, so I removed this conflict and it went out. And then when it got out, there was another conflict. But this conflict was actually gone when it went out because it existed. Let's take a look where, well, here's my thing. It existed because B was retracted. So as soon as B extended, this conflict was gone. But then when it did extend, we had another problem. We had another conflict here in that we had a conflict with A extending. So let me hook this back up and then disconnect this and then let it go, and then we saw that this did retract, and once that retracted, oh, the conflict's back again. Is there a way for me to, like, shut this off momentarily, let half the cycle run, and then turn it back on again? And then when this other conflict happens, turn this conflict off while this conflict is powered up so that this can actually retract so then the cycle goes again. What I'm saying is, we're going to use a relay valve to either have air coming out of here to run half of the cycle, or air coming out of here to run the other half. Okay, just take a look at this. What we've got here, so you've got an example where we're splitting this into two. And as you can see, we split right down the middle, right down the middle where the conflict is. So we're dividing the actual control statement in half, or more specifically the sequential statement. We're dividing it in half with that line, and we're saying, you know what, I know that the conflict is in the first half, not letting A extend. The conflict was here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that off, because it's actually coming from the second half of the sequential statement. So if I just turn the second half of the sequential statement off, well, it's gone. And I could do that with this relay valve. Yeah, I can say that this port here runs the first half. And as you know this, I think you know this, when air goes in here, it either comes out here or here. It doesn't come out both. It only comes out here or here, depending on, pardon me, you know what, I'm, I'm not doing this properly because I'm upside down. And I, compared to me, it either comes out here or it comes out here, depending on whether I have air in there or air in there. So when air is coming in here, it either comes out here or it comes out here. So I'm going to use this port to run 
this half of the sequential statement, just this half, and the other half is turned off. And while that half is running, it's okay. The air from here is going to power everything in that half. All of the stuff in that half of the sequential statement is powered by this, and the other half, where the conflict is, it's not powered, so the conflict is gone. There's no air coming in here. Pardon me. You know what? The air is coming here. There's no air coming out of here to create conflict because it's off. Now, when this half is completed, then the second half is going to happen. And I'm going to turn this half off, the first half off, because you know what? The first half, we had conflict. Remember when we ran this thing to the second? We ran half of it, and then we saw that actually B wouldn't extend Sorry, B wouldn't retract because A was telling it to extend, which was the conflict. But that comes that conflict comes from the first half of the sequential statement that was powered from here. But there's no power here anymore because halfway during the sequential statement, or halfway during the process, I switched it. Yeah, we have some what's called a group selector. The group selector is always the last action in the group. So the last action in the group is going to shut the group off and turn the next group on. So what's going to happen is that the group selector for the, the first part is going to turn the first part off by actually activating this pilot. So the first group is powered from here. And at the end, the group selector itself, which is the last action in the group, the group selector is always the last action in the group. That is going to actually run this pilot over here. So it runs air into this pilot, and then it's going to switch the air from here into here. There's no more air coming here, so therefore the conflict is gone. And um, I am now going to have this running the second half, so that everything in the group is powered from the, from the relay valve, except the last action, which is the group selector. So every group everything, all limit valves, all actions, everything in the group is powered from the relay valve except for the group selector, which is the last action. So let's actually see this in action with another one that has conflict a little bit. So I think I've given you enough for now. Yeah, that, that's enough, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a video on the board of um, maybe two or three different sequential statements with conflict resolution with brackets and stuff like that. So you can really delve into that homework. But for now, do those sequential statements without conflict resolution. I think you'll be good to do those. Um, and then, uh, yeah, do your lab too, and, and, and you're all good. So we'll, um, we'll, <laughs> we'll just end this now. And you can scan through that video so you can get a really good understanding. So I think you fully have an understanding of what conflict is, why we have conflict, and how to resolve that. Maybe we'll do a little bit more. You might need a little bit more practice with sequential statements where it's solving resolution. But I think we're good. Okay, bye.